Well, happy Sunday, everybody. I hope you are all doing well out there. I hope Daryl Morey is having a splendid day and keeping his eyes open because that is right. We have another update on Dame Watch. We have an interesting piece put out from a Sixers writer for The Athletic and the Sixers Summer League starts tomorrow. There's so much excitement. I can't wait. Let's talk about it. Perfect. 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 What is going on, everybody? RB here. Welcome back on into Philly Take with RB, where we talk about the Philadelphia sports constantly. You know what to do. Hit the like if you're enjoying the content. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And be sure to ring the bell so you get all the notifications. And check out the first ever Philly Take with RB merch store. The Teesprings link is down in the description. Go cop yourself some fire take merch. All right, let's talk about it. So today we start with something very irrelevant, but something that, of course, is going to make Sixers fans lose their mind. Something on a lighter note, you know, and that is this. That is it. Look at it. Shout out to Damian Lillard and Team USA for securing the gold, baby. But Damian Lillard put out a thread of pictures with different players. And he put out one with Matisse Thibel, and it's not the first time he put something out uh, with Matisse Thibel. And of course, Sixers fan, anything that Damian Lillard posts over the next couple months is going to make Sixers fans lose their mind, especially involving a player on the Sixers. I don't know why people were, you know, going absolutely, you know, absurd and just bananas over this. It was just a picture with Matisse Thibel, but it does look good. Imagine that future backcourt. Imagine that. The offense. The, imagine that. Imagine that, man. That would be sick. But shout out to Damian Lillard. Hopefully, Matisse has been talking to him a little bit, you know, trying to ma just maneuver him a little bit in our direction. But anyway, uh, that is that pretty cool picture there. But something very much more relevant that we are about to get into involves this. So Kelly Oubre Jr., signed with the charlotte hornets it, apparently his free agency market um was pretty heavy but he was he wasn't really seeing it in terms of the monetary um supply that was there for him and it took him a bit longer to sign than a lot of people expected and kelly Oubre jr was apparently recruited by damian lillard and the portland trailblazers and guess what <laughs> he said no he said no how many times do I have to preach this? Swing and miss. We have to hope and pray that the Blazers strike out in free agency. It's exactly what they've done. And here's a piece, um, and here's a quote from Jason Quick, a Blazers writer who we've referenced multiple times before. He covers everything Portland Trail Blazers. He says, the big offseason swing many expected from the Blazers was never going to come in free agency. Portland had limited tools, only the taxpayer mid-level which wasn't enough to lure Nicholas Batum back for a second tour. Uh, they also couldn't convince Kelly Oubre to take the taxpayer mid-level, even though Damian Lillard told me he made a pitch to get him at the end of the regular season. And this is a quote from Damian Lillard. He says, it wasn't anything deep other than he, would he be open to it, and he said he was. I liked Oubre as a compliment to other guys I thought we would be able to get. We didn't get them so i mean it, it just continues on you know um damian lillard what yesterday or two days ago said you know i mean there were guys we wanted we didn't get them now you you know no offense right i mean you couldn't recruit kelly Oubre. you couldn't recruit kelly Oubre jr to portland on a team where he may honestly get valuable minutes he elects to go with the charlotte hornets at that point damian lillard what else do you need brother Come join us, Dame. Open arms, Dame. We are here waiting. We are here ready. And we we know, right? I mean, I've been we've been constantly preaching this. Daryl Morey is playing a huge risky waiting game. It, it's it's very risky because we there there's a good chance we could potentially run this thing back and people are going to be pissed off about it. But at the same time, all these other teams have bit, right? They went and signed guys of free agency. Maybe not the, the elite superstars that they want, but they went with the they went with the insurance plan. And they just wanted to make sure that they would get somebody. And, and the Sixers, on the other hand, have Daryl Morey, who, like I've said all season, is a, a home run swinger. He's going to swing for the fences. He's trying to put one out of the park. But if Damian Lillard opens up, if a superstar like that were to become available, guess what? The Sixers have the assets 
They haven't made the huge splash. Daryl Morey did a good job filling out the supporting cast, but he's waiting for that final touch, man. And maybe it pays off, maybe it doesn't, but Daryl Morey usually has been able to pull something off. But with, with how things are, are leaning here and trending, you can't tell me that Damian Lillard is going to want to stay in Portland. That I mean, that was the huge thing. He literally came out and said the roster was not good enough. So now they did essentially nothing in free agency. It's time, like he knows he's not going to win. The writing is on the wall. And, you know, it, it. there's only so much to being a loyal player. We saw a guy like Russell Westbrook just go to L.A. You got to have better talent around you. And, you know, coming to a team like the Sixers, who were one win away from the Eastern Conference Finals with a player who essentially couldn't play offense in the playoffs. I mean, you had Damian Lillard to the squad. Look at where we're at. And I'm not saying anything's a guarantee. If, you know, it's not a guarantee we, we would win the championship. It's not a guarantee he would even come here. But if he did, you know, we, we stack up pretty well against some of these teams in the East who have gotten a lot better drastically in, in the last couple weeks. And, you know, it's time to do something. So, if they, you know, we, we continue to monitor this Dame watch. If he, you know, opts out, I mean, we're here, man. We are here. And, uh, I mean, you couldn't recruit Kelly Oubre Jr. Who, who else are you going to get at this point? Who? I know Dame doesn't want to keep going home in the first round. But anyway, going even further, Derek Bodner, a Sixers uh, senior writer for The Athletic, who I follow pretty much every single day, he put out an interesting piece. And, and, he, and he says, since the Sixers season ended, the team has kept a watchful eye on Damian Lillard. And here's his quote from the piece. It would be fair to say the goal is less to trade Ben Simmons and more to acquire Lillard. So according to Derek Bodner, you know, th this guy has been on our watch. And obviously, you know, a lot of people around the league are saying the Sixers could be a potential destination. But, you know, it, it even less than just trading Ben Simmons and getting him off, right? Like we all, we, know, we feel that pressure as fans who, you know, just didn't like the salty ending and how things went down. But more so, it's Damian Lillard's had, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, Daryl Morey's had his eyes on Damian Lillard. He he knows what it takes to go out and get a star. He knows that Joel Embiid needs his guard next to him. So, you know, it, it's interesting to hear this, and it does sound like it, it, it's, you know, really solidified that the Sixers have serious interest if he were to come out. And I would expect the Sixers to be one of the top destinations if he were to request out. And then you would start to really evaluate because Daryl Morey has missed um, at other instances. And if he was not able to pull off a Dame Lillard trade, if he were to request out, especially with other teams going in different directions, then we would have some serious conversations about really is Daryl Morey the right guy? But, you know, I mean, we're here. We're here for the waiting. Maybe it even takes a month or two into the season. But I assure you that uh, if he does become available, the Sixers are going to be right up in there. And honestly, um, at that point, Daryl, it, it would, all the pressure would be on you to pull something off. And we're, we're just going to have to keep hoping and praying because with the way this Ben Simmons thing is going, if he comes back to camp, there's going to be a division in the locker room. It, there's not going to be the right vibe. The fans aren't going to like it. So, you know, it, it almost feels like this has to happen. Something has to go down. Um, but who knows? We it, It's really hard to get a pulse at this point. But the last thing we'll discuss is the Sixers Summer League. Moving on from all that, we'll see how the roster plays out. How about the young guys who we are hoping to see in the Summer League, right? The Paul Reeds, the Isaiah Joes. How about Jaden Springer, our uh, first-round pick? And here's the Sixers Summer League schedule. I want to know from you guys. Let me know down below in the comments section, please. Would you want me to do a Sixers play-by-play -play like we did throughout the season? Or would you prefer maybe like a post-game live stream, come on and just kind of, you know, talk about the basics of what we see because really we're just evaluating some young talent. Let me know down below in the comment section. I can't wait. We will be covering uh, most of or maybe all of the games this week. I know we got the Eagles preseason on Thursday. So there's a lot coming up. Um, I'm really excited. Of course, we'll be staying up to date with all the latest news and coverage and everything going on. But what am I expecting out of the Sixers Summer League? I'm expecting Tyree Smacks you to go off. And I'm expecting Paul Reed to go off. And, and I can't wait to see what guys like Isaiah Joe do. And uh, even some of our picks this year like uh, Phillip and Jaden Springer and, and all these guys, man. And Charles Bassey. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what this young talent can do. It's about time Doc starts to trust this young talent. And, well, we will see what happens as we go from there. But that's pretty much it. You let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. What do you make of all this? 
do you think it is time for Dane to request a trade? Give me all your thoughts down below in the comment section. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Perfect. Perfect.